Yo, what's up everybody? It's your man Tim Swain and listen, I'm here with a Ghanaian American international real estate development company building these beautiful properties about 10 minutes from multiple beaches and guess what? They're all under $200,000. Tim, thank you for joining us today at Ocean View Residences. Uh, thank this you so place. much for uh, for allowing me to be here. Like I said, this is one of my first times on a construction site. Um, I don't know what I'm looking at, but I'm sure you're going to explain all that to me. I will. That's what we're here for. So this way. Of course, we are walking into a construction site, so safety first. All right. So thank you so much for my hat here. I got my red hat, it reminds me of uh, Paw Patrol. Every single time I see this red hat, I think of my son in Paw Patrol. But uh, uh, as I said, this is my first time here on the construction site and I I'm interested in knowing more about the company. So can you give us a little bit of background about the company before we get into the actual facility? Of course, so ProSquare was primarily founded as a acquisition company, right, for real estate. So um, they assisted Ghanaians living in Ghana to acquire real estate in the U.S., uh, develop it, um, and then either make it a residence or sell on. And what was really mind-blowing was the fact that, you know, the founder who is Ghanaian-American and so sees and has experienced life in both continents um, realized that people here were able to afford real estate in the U.S., mm. but they were not able to afford real estate here. Wow. Um, because the cost of land and the cost of um, materials is so high, it was cheaper for them or more financially sound to purchase abroad than to purchase at home. And that sort of got you know, the wheels turning on how can we deliver essentially what it is that our clients are seeking abroad in Ghana at a price that they can afford. And you know, that's, that's actually what got me interested in seeing this place is because realizing that um, when I heard about the price and I heard about all the amenities and the specificities of the place that we're going to get into, it really, really, really sparked my attention. So uh, can you tell us a little bit more about this, uh, this overall development? How many, how many houses are here? Uh, maybe like square footage uh, before we take our, our, our walk through. Perfect. So this is, um, you know, we say this is our proof of concept development. It's a six unit development. Each unit is just under 2,500 square feet. It comes in at 2,475 square feet over three floors. And what this gets you is three bedrooms. It gets you a staff quarters and it gets you a roof terrace. Now, we are offering essentially a turnkey solution. However, the units are customizable depending on your specific needs. Um, okay, well, fantastic. So listen, for folks out there watching, listen, I need you to use your mind's eye because it is unfinished. But we're gonna paint the picture today of every beautiful amenity that is in this place. The first thing I noticed when I walked in here was like the windows, right? I noticed that these were not like the traditional windows that I see on uh, Ghanaian homes were like, even like the air quality is different because it's a smaller window, you got the bars on it, you can't really open it up, the airflow doesn't go that well. But I noticed that these windows are larger and you can't feel this because you're not where we are, but there's a, a breeze that this openness allows us to have. So can you tell us a little bit more maybe like the windows and even like the flooring and how did you guys choose this specific style? Of course, so you know, as mentioned, our founder is um, Ghanaian American. And so he has seen you know, the different sides of things and how, you know, natural light and how, as you say, air quality can really impact living, right? And so in Ghana, traditionally, we build with smaller windows because the window slabs, as they're sold, come at a specific mm. size. So it's more cost effective. Now, being able to do larger windows, you're having to purchase three slabs and cutting them and, you know, you end up with waste. And so typically builders go for the most cost effective option. Here, this is about a lifestyle. This is not about just keeping costs down. It's about creating a lifestyle and creating a home that people want to spend time with. We don't want to build homes where people feel the need to go out. You, may, you want to entertain at home. You want to have your friends come in. And so we've built these great big windows, which are on every single floor. Uh, just to allow maximum natural light in and maximum airflow. We are 10 minutes away from the beach. I would also like to just point out our floors. This is a huge, um, a huge feat in Ghana. So everyone likes the wood 
this wood styling, but as we all know, taking care of wood yeah. uh, is time consuming and does require a lot of love and care. So what we've done is we've been able to source tiles that are wood effects. So these are all tiles. This is tiles. These are tiles. Jeez, right? this is beautiful. With complete wood effect. So this room here would be an open plan living and dining area. We have a guest bathroom which would go in here with a little toilet and a sink so that you know you can have guests who don't have to access the entire home. We have our living area here, which benefits from complete natural light. And then walking over here, um, we will be building islands. Um, typically in homes here, you have an L shape mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that's about the extent of the counter space you have here. We are in building an island because this is open plan. Mm -hmm. Being able to face your guests while you're preparing a salad or you're making drinks is part of that entertaining effect that we want to create yeah. within this space. Yeah. Now all units come with um, fitted appliances, so refrigeration, freezers, microwaves, ovens, AC. Full shebang, air conditioners in every room. Um, we're in Ghana, it's 33 degrees Charlie, it's Celsius hot. today. It's hot. So. <laughs> it's hot too. What's also nice um, is round here, so attached to the house but private, is um, what we what we term as staff quarters. So if you have a housekeeper or you have a nanny who helps you and they live on site, they would be able to have their own privacy. If you don't, this could be used as a woman cave or a man cave this could be a little additional storage area or it could be a home office mm. you know so it's just a nice little external space um, that can be used however you see fit and as you can see here we have huge double doors coming in right? so if we come through this way we have one of our first bathrooms in the building wow so so this is actually what once it's done, the bathroom will look like this, or at least this kind of design. Exactly. Wow. Exactly correct. So our renderings um, are, are true representations of what we are building here. So you would have a glass shower stall in here, hey. and then you would have a toilet, you'd have a sink with a mirror, um, and it would be a sink, single bowl sink. Um, for you know family use with under sink storage. Wow, wow, this is great. You guys are gonna have a lot of glass in here. That's great. We glass do. in Kwa, it'll be great. We that'll like great. the idea of you know sort of marrying a very contemporary look, but also a very modern feel in order to be able to you know create like a timeless design that people can live in and grow in and can be sort of a template or foundation for all personality styles to be able to sort of like build on uh, with furniture and with your own personal you know touches i can see the vision and i can see the specificity and the attention to detail but now let's keep it real all right say so now let's keep it real okay. what have been some of the challenges with trying to um, do something like this here in ghana so ghana is an interesting market because we you know, we have all of this beautiful land and, you know, there's so many people with great ideas, but the cost of land acquisition is astronomical here in Ghana. Really? Indeed. So when you think about the outskirts or, you know, outside of larger cities, they can be affordable, but then you have the challenges of like road networks and accessibility to the city. Uh, in order to source land in like a prime location where you have easy access to the airport, grocery store, shopping malls, beaches, etc., etc., like how, where we are, which is five minutes from um, the shopping mall, 40 minutes from the airport, you know, you're 10 minutes from Bojo Beach. Um, it's very, very difficult to find affordable land, which is why it's difficult to be able to afford to build affordably. So quick question about that. Maybe not this place, but let's say, for example, for somebody who doesn't really know about even ideally what affordable is, let's, let's paint a scenario. Let's say you're in, they want to live in the heart of a crowd. East Legon, a Dragonor, okay. and they're looking for, uh, uh, let's say they want to buy a plot of land that's like 100 by 70 or something mm -hmm. like that. Maybe just ballpark figure. You could pay 100,000 US. Dollars? Yes. For one plot of land? Correct. Wow. It's a prime location and, you know, even in Ghana, if um, 
When you purchase land, it is technically a land lease and not a land purchase, right? Mm. And so it is a huge investment um, to take. And once you've acquired the land, um, it's not as easy to then come up with the resources to be able to put up mm -hmm. you know, your dream structure. So oftentimes you find, as you may have experienced in Accra, incomplete buildings because people have heavily invested in the purchase of the land and construction has begun and then cash flow has declined, especially with COVID. Um, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of incomplete buildings that were abandoned because the funds were unavailable to complete construction. So, you know, for us, that's been a huge challenge, um, number one. Number two, we are, you know, we are hardworking people, right? People who work with their hands, creatives. Um, but the technicality that is required to you know, build something like this is very specific. So working with artisans and being able to, you know, invest the time, the effort in, in trial and error for them to be able to upskill um, is difficult, right? We are trying to build affordably. We are trying to employ locally and ensure that, you know, people are earning like a living wage and not a minimum wage. And so it's very, very challenging to want to have a social impact Mm -hmm. do the right thing and keep it affordable. So wow. these are one of the challenges, but you know, we are working with a great team who even for this project, all of our blocks are made here. Yeah, and I, and I know we're gonna see some of those blocks later um, because that was one of the points where um, it really stood out to me that you all are really trying very hard and very intentionally to make sure that you are trying to stay as local as possible. Correct. But it also made me realize when you talked about uh, that those two challenges in terms of affordability of land as well as the type of skill set that you need, it makes me think about how even as I reflect on my experiences in Ghana, like sometimes it's like you get what you pay for in essence, in, another, in, in you know, so many words. When you have houses that are very simple, I've lived in them where it's like, oh, Charlie, why does this door not close? <laughs> how come the windows don't close? Are you standing in the house and it's leaning to one side and it's like, ah, okay. So it's like the more you really want something that is luxury and I wouldn't even say luxury, I would even say like if you're coming from the outside like a lot of y'all come from the States, this is really basic stuff Correct. that we would think is basic like a floor that's level, doors Correct. that close, Correct. stuff that's functional. Correct. <laughs> um, but you have to, as you said, you need people who have their skill set to order really to make sure that your stuff is done right and it comes with a cost. Correct. You gotta pay people what they're worth, so. And you know, we live in an environment where um, we're scrappy, right? So yeah. if something doesn't work, we say, we'll make it work, we'll figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. Like everybody here is amenable, right? So something's not perfect, we manage it, right? But for us, it was very, very important to say that this would not be a space where you manage, mm -hmm. you know, shortcomings or mm -hmm. lack of attention to detail. What we said is people who are, you know, well healed, you know, traveled, cultured, who have a standard of living that they want to maintain, should be able to have that standard of living anywhere in the world that they are. And it shouldn't have to cost you your retirement, mm. right? Mm. So it's very important for us to be able to say that uh, in as much as we are using local skill set, the availability of talent is here, yeah. right? It's about just working with people and having the patience and the willingness to really invest in the human element to be able to ensure that we're delivering to that standard. So, you know, with the doors being made, et cetera, et cetera, if a door is made and it's not to standard, it doesn't get put in. Yeah. We've tried, I believe, four different types of paint wow. to really see what works best, the right color, the right texture, in terms of like longevity, how does it do with the weather? So all of these things are incredibly important to us because this is a forever home. Yeah. So I want, I want to get to the space we're in right now. The I, I just realized something, y'all, that people are phasing out the term master bedroom, and now they're calling it what the primary. The primary suite. The primary, the primary suites, because we don't like the term master. <laughs> you said that with an accent. Primary suites. of master. Correct. I want to say something else, but I don't want to say <laughs> but, but I mean, so I want to know more about this, and then I want to get to the beautiful terrace that we have that overlooks those, uh, when we go downstairs, we talk about those the bricks and even like the, the, the aesthetics of the outside. So. Fantastic. So as you said, Tim, this is the primary suite, which is the 
pinnacle of this house is my favorite space here um, so this would be for the homeowner essentially or whoever deserves the most space and has the most shoes to stick in the closet um, and it's a gorgeous wide open space with views on both ends being able to see the oceans and being able to see sort of the hills and your neighbors um, going upward. It's a great space um, which will have inbuilt closets and what is interesting or unique is we have opted to not put doors on the bathroom and to have like a nice open flow area. So here you would have his and her sinks with a mirror um, and so it would be completely open and then here we would have a bathtub you'd have your toilet which would have a door on it and then you oh, have a shower okay that's true. so i was like if somebody come in here <laughs> and they have to take care of some business the toilet will have a door on it, <laughs> uh, but we wanted the bathroom to be, um, you know, a light space that yeah. sort of has a natural flow with the rest of the room. And arguably the greatest feature of this house is right around the corner. So you said that this is uh, your favorite aspect of the house? 100% because you have this gorgeous, you know, primary suite which leads out onto a private terrace wow. and it, it's it's the most perfect calming zen space in the house what i do like about it is it gives you views of everything right so you could use this as an entertaining space you could have your morning coffee out here is that, this is could be the water out there the water is right over there wow. as you can see it's a little hazy today uh, but we have the water right there you can come out here and have a nice little uh, party, like a little intimate party, yes. drink a little wine, feel fine, spend some time. And what we did, you know, really think about when designing this was, you know, you may want to use this as your own personal space or you might want to use it as an entertaining space which is why when you come up the stairs there is a separate door here so people don't have to access the bedroom oh, in order to access the terrace that's really smart so there's that little separation you, there you guys have thought of all the details we've tried you know i think what is really important when you're developing homes and you know um the CEO and founder, one of the big things he had to ask himself is how do I want to live, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? What is, what are the, what are the important things that sometimes when you travel, you might be in an Airbnb or whatever that are lacking, that are missing. What are those little touches that actually make a space feel like home or make it more comfortable or make it more fluid, right? So these are some of the little things that we've thought about. And right here, um, from this unit at least and from pretty much all units with the exception of maybe the corner one you have like the nice green space which is going to be over there which okay. will be a little green garden but for us what is primarily important is greenery for this to feel very lush very serene and you know you we are within close access to our crowd but you don't want to feel that way yeah, yeah you want to feel like this is an escape from the hustle and bustle so when your day is over you come home yeah. and home is your sanctuary and home is you know your peaceful your quiet space and not you know mm -hmm. have to deal with you know what the city yeah, gives yeah. us on a it's, daily it's, it's, basis it can be stressful it can be really stressful so you want to come to a place like this where it's home and um as we can look up here can you um you mentioned something about uh the specificity of design and and material so i'm looking down here at these bricks uh, you guys make your own bricks correct wow now, now why was that important for you guys to do well it's important because again with the way that we are building we do want it to feel very natural and oftentimes when uh, bricks are purchased they aren't you know they aren't sanded down they aren't reinforced so cheap. they're cheap so the blocks are made here and then they are essentially you know sanded down wow. um, to make sure that they're smooth and then they are cemented and babied and nurtured and loved on to just to make sure that we are putting like every single block that makes up your home um, is something that we're proud of right because this is a home that we want to stand the test of time yeah wow you guys are 
building blocks so that we can build a home. I like that, Tim. So, I like that. I'm going to charge you for that. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a discount, so you just only got to give me two CDs. So kind. Um, but, no, but let's get to the point that I think a lot of people want to know. The money, the money, the money. The numbers. The numbers. Talk to us about if I'm watching this right now and I want to be a part of this green, lush, luxurious, but affordable community, what does that look like in terms of my bank account? Okay, so we are building homes. Our standard homes are at the $169,000 mark. Um, we cap it at 200000 So none of the homes here would exceed $200,000 to build, but our our cost price is $169,000. Now, we are building essentially um, off plan, so certain features are customizable, you know, how you want your bathrooms, you know, accessibility for wheelchairs, et cetera, et cetera. But those are the costs we're looking at. And um, now, just a quick question for folks who may be unfamiliar with some of the real estate terms, off plan exactly, what does that mean? So what that means is that the buildings are not complete. So there are certain aspects of it that you can tailor, make, make or customize to your own personal Got it. Um, taste. Okay. And the other question that I have is, right, so oh, how, this, 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 this place has six units. Correct. But of those six units, how many are still available? So we're 50% sold. So we have three units left for sale at the moment. Um, and um, for us, there's a $5,000 like holding fee. If you are interested in a property, so it's a $5,000 non-refundable, which secures your interest. And we offer payment plans, you know. Um, again, we want to build affordably, but we also take into account the fact that people, you know, may not have yeah, $169,000 lying around. <laughs> they, they may not. <laughs> and they may not. They may some not. people may, but some people may not. Um, and then how, how can we learn more about uh, ProSquare, how to get in contact with you guys? So for this particular development, we are um, OceanViewResidences.com and info at OceanViewResidences.com and you will be able to get in touch with us for more information, a prospectus, et cetera, et cetera, for what you need to know about our space. And listen, that information is right there in the description below. Where the title is, the description is right, okay, go down, go down, boom. The description is right there. You have all of their information right there. You can go to their website. You can contact them via email. Everything is there. Listen, uh, Danab, I'm so grateful that you allowed me to be here today. Um, I would love to talk to you more, but I feel like I'm about to melt. The sun well, thank is you for joining us. my head, even though I got my Paw Patrol hat on. Uh, but I'm sure the information that you shared was really uh, informative, and it helped give us a perspective about, number one, just even how we set prices for homes in Ghana, why it's so important to pay attention to detail, but I think most importantly, how we can create an opportunity where people can come, have an environment where they can escape the hustle and bustle of Accra, and just relax in an ocean view residence. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I know you love this content. As always, like the video. Make sure you subscribe. Until next time, peace.